morning. Happy New Year. Welcome. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I know you're at home because uh, we are unable to meet at the church. Uh, but I want you to know that whether I'm in my shop here, uh, you're at home in your living room, wherever you are and standing in the kitchen, uh, watching uh, as you uh, do the morning dishes, uh, wherever we are, uh, we can still stop and worship and recognize God for who he is. But welcome, Happy New Year 2022. Uh, can you believe it? We made it. I mean, uh, who would have guessed? Well, I can't imagine, you know, thinking back when I was just young, uh, this far ahead. But, uh, you know, and it doesn't seem that long ago. Uh, you know, I remember watching uh, on TV a show called Here Come the 70s. Uh, and I almost choke when I say that was 50 years ago. But uh, it was a show about progress in science and technology uh, that, were coming, that were coming up in the 70s. And uh, I was amazed uh, learning then about these new advances. And uh, I couldn't believe that people were going to be able to walk around and talk without being connected by a cord. You know, that there was going to be cell phones, just like there is in Star Trek, you know. Uh, but, uh, and I'm still amazed today at uh, what mankind has been able to achieve. Uh, it far outpaces my ability to comprehend. But there is something else. There's something else uh, besides uh, the constant change in science and technology that amazes me. And it's the constant and unchanging love of our Father revealed in this book. Now, Pastor Doug is starting a new series on the Beatitudes uh, uh, recorded in Matthew. And at the end of Jesus' method, message on what we call uh, the Sermon on the Mount, it says in Matthew 7, 28, when Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority. Now, these new amazing things that they were learning uh, 2,000 years ago, read, uh, are just as new and amazing today. So I pray that you will read and listen close and be amazed and may God amaze and bless you this new year 2022 welcome in Jesus name amen one two three four Do you? 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power.
three, four. Well, everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me And everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a savior The hope of the nations And my savior, he can move the mountains My God is my indeed jesus is mighty to save i want to welcome everyone joining us online today and i hope each of you had a christmas filled with the joy of christ but here we are at the beginning of a brand new year 2022 is upon us and how time flies another year has gone by and i'm sure like every other year we most take the time to reflect back on the last 365 days which is a good thing but like every 24-hour day once it's gone uh, we have really no choice but to move forward uh, to take the next step into a brand new year uh, consisting of another 365 new days and so that's where we are we have the year ahead of ahead of us now i had in mind to begin a brand new series uh, today called blessed looking at matthew chapter 5 beginning with the beatitudes this morning and i am looking forward to doing that new series uh, but the more i thought about 
at the new year and perhaps maybe the last one or two years that have passed, I was drawn to a passage in Philippians chapter 3. So as with many things in life, things are subject to change without notice. So I'm not going to start uh, our new series today. We'll begin that next week. Uh, but before we transition into today's message, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you uh, and give thanks for the amazing grace that you've given to us in 2021 through your son, Jesus. May this amazing grace be known more and more through your church in the year ahead. In a world that is continually changing, God, help us to live in a manner worthy of the calling that we've received. Help us to live by faith and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be holy as you are holy and conform us into the likeness of your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I've titled today's message, Pressing On. Certainly the last couple of years have been challenging for everyone, to say the least. Uh, life has been subject to change in ways that either we, each of us have never experienced before or maybe even thought possible. Uh, pressing on in light of this has been difficult. H how do you deal with something you've never had to deal with before? I think of my role as pastor. I've never had the opportunity to pastor through a pandemic, no experience to draw from. In a nutshell, life has been anything uh, but normal. I think I was drawn to this passage this morning because when the going gets tough, how do we press on? Well, I think the Apostle Paul brings an interesting perspective on this subject. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Philippians, and I hope you brought your Bibles. I hope you have them in front of you. If not, don't worry. I'll wait. Hit the pause button, and we'll be right back. But Philippians chapter 3, and I want to begin reading in verse 12. Let's read that this morning. Paul writes, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, if you know anything about the life of the Apostle Paul, you would know how much he suffered for the gospel's sake. Paul reflects on some of his suffering in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want to read a bit of that this morning so that we can gain insight into Paul's experiences in life. How did he handle difficulty? What did it produce in him? Let's get some context in light of Paul telling us to press on this advice. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, starting in verse 23. Let's read that together. Paul writes, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. 24, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. 26, I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. Verse 27, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all of the churches. Now it goes without saying that Paul encountered and understood difficulty. 
the pressure a person can face in this light, in this life. Yet, in light of our passage this morning, Paul tells us this advice, press on. I remember a number of years ago, my wife and I uh, decided to uh, take up running. Uh, we had set a goal of 5K, and I think we were aiming for uh, under 30 minutes. And I can still remember that first day, uh, finding the rhythm in the run, and getting the breathing just right, you know, pacing, you know, yourself. I had in my mind to do all of those things, but as the, as the run progressed, this is what went through my mind. What are you doing? Uh, this isn't fun at all. This isn't how you thought things would work out. You're not going to make it. You might as well just give up. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was rough. Uh, my muscles were not used to that type of strain. But perhaps more important, my mind was not prepared for just how difficult it would be. You see, I hadn't been running at all. I wasn't used to the training. Oh, the pain, something that I really wasn't familiar with. Paul was familiar with the pain. And on this run, to make matters worse, the, the hardest part of the run was at the end, a long hill that seemed to run on forever. Did I make it? Yes, I made it. Uh, why? Because I was determined to finish. And second, I needed to keep up with my wife. You see, difficulty can produce one of two things. It can produce in us a heart of defeat, or it can produce in us a heart of determination. Uh, what do you do when the going gets tough? Well, according to the Apostle Paul, you press on. You arm your mind with the determination to finish the race to get the prize. Uh, let's return to our passage in uh, Philippians chapter 3 in context to pressing on and in context to Paul's life because we find out some very interesting things. Let's read that once again. Verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. This passage is very interesting. On the one hand, you have the past. What has happened? And on the other hand, you have the future, what is yet to happen. You see, some of us can make the mistake of allowing difficulty to define them. A woe is me type of thinking, where we throw our hands up in the air and we say, what's the point? I'm done. Yet, with all that Paul endured, he makes this bold statement, press on. The Greek word, Adeoko, to pursue, to aggressively chase. This earnest pursuit. The Apostle Paul had in his mind to press on, to pursue the calling of Christ. He connected the two. That all the difficulty that he endured, he connected it to his calling in Christ. Because Paul understood that his life was a spiritual pursuit. It wasn't about this world. It wasn't about the pursuit of happiness, if you will. It was a spiritual pursuit that, it was, that was calling him toward heaven. How do we press on? How do you move beyond the difficulty? Well, Paul points to the power of Christ that took hold of his life. The power to save him. He, he reads, or he writes, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold, now listen, of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. After coming to faith in Jesus, Paul obtained access to the power of God through the, Holy, through the Holy Spirit. Paul was able to press on because he was pressing in to Christ. 
You see, this word obtained in this verse is the Greek, is the Greek word uh, lambano, and it means to lay hold of, to accept what is available or to what is offered or to what is offered. It can also mean to ex- accept with um, initiative. In other words, accepting it is one thing, but then doing something with what you've accepted is another. It's an assertiveness from the one that uh, receives it. Oftentimes, difficulty can get the best of us. Um, or when the going gets tough, we get trampled because we don't lay hold of which Christ offers, the strength and the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Instead, uh, we try to put our confidence uh, in ourselves instead of putting our confidence in Christ. We put our confidence in how we can get through a situation, how we can overcome this trial. And what Paul realized, what Paul embraced is that in Christ, he can overcome. You see, when we put our confidence in the flesh, when we put our confidence in ourself, difficulty will define us and will ultimately defeat us. You see, Paul lays aside his confidence in the flesh in the previous verses, if you read that from the top of the chapter. As it relates to the flesh, he had much to boast about. He had much to brag about. But he came to realize that the flesh just gives birth to more flesh and actually keeps him not only from Christ, but also the power of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. If you turn in your Bibles to 2 Peter, turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we read, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord, now listen, and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Now, there's a lot in that single verse. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To who be the glory? To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, Paul did not allow difficulty to define him. He allowed difficulty to refine him into the image of Jesus Christ. Putting no confidence, absolutely no confidence in the flesh, he sought heaven. He sought God. He sought as a surrender to the one who is able to both save him. Now listen but also send him into the world. Paul understood difficulty as part of, now listen, the discipleship that is in Christ. He understood difficulty and discipleship as being just part of the package. What happens when difficulty comes? Well, for Paul, he grew in the grace and then in the knowledge of his Lord and Savior. You see, oftentimes we think of Jesus as Savior, but we don't actually move to the place where he's Lord. And when he's Lord, um, we have that confidence. We can say, okay, Jesus goes before us. It refines us. Turn with me to 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, and we're going to read in verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, and I want to start reading in verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, starting verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy has given us, now listen, new birth in living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Into, listen, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through, listen, faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Listen to verse 7. 
These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise and, listen, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, Paul understood the goal of his life, to be found faithful, to press on towards Jesus and to carry out the Great Commission no matter what. You see, Paul uh, did not store his treasure on earth. He, store, he, he had treasure in heaven. Uh, Paul was laying hold of, was, of what was made available to him, the power to overcome the world. Turn with me to 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Listen to what John writes. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Do you see that? For everyone born of God overcomes the world. You see, our faith in Christ and our victory in the world are connected. The faith that saves you is also the faith that sustains you. You can't have victory in the world apart from the, the continued faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Through his faith in Jesus, Paul understood that he was in God's hands. Uh, I'll call it a full restoration, being completely restored, being completely refined. Turn with me to James chapter 1, starting in verse 2. James chapter 1, starting in verse 2. James writes, the brother of Jesus, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, the difficulties we encounter are never intended to destroy our faith, but rather to build our faith, to mature our faith. Our spiritual fitness, our spir spiritual maturity is tested and also trained by the difficulties that we face. We've had lots of trials. We've had lots of difficulties in the last couple of years. What have those difficulties done to your faith? Do you feel stronger? Do you have more resolve? Do you have more confidence in Christ than you ever had before? Paul was able to press on because he understood the goal of his faith. He was being persuaded that all things work together for the good, working together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to, called according to God's purpose. Yeah, Romans 8, 28. Uh, Paul was running the race that God had set before him. Let's go back to our passage uh, in verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. We read, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ. You see, Paul, in this very, in the very next chapter, in chapter 4, I believe it is, verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You see, Paul recognized that there, was, there were opportunities that lay ahead, but there were also difficulties that lay ahead. There were difficulties behind. Uh, and in his determination to win the prize, he pressed on towards that goal. Well, I'm sure that there are many things that we would like to change from the previous year or so. Uh, we simply can't. It's in the past. We each have to press on to the potential uh, that awaits in 2022. 
I think the Apostle Paul recognized that every day offers opportunity. And those opportunities are only realized when we take that initiative, when we assert uh, that action. And what's that action? Faith in God. The faith that God calls every believer to. You see, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork. Who are we? We're God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do work, good works. Now listen, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Paul did not get sidetracked by life's difficulties, but he fixed his eyes on the goal. What was the goal? To present Christ to the world. Paul was able to press on because he understood that Christ went before him. Christ called him, but he also went before him. If you turn with me to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 31, verse 8, we read, The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Paul could press on because he was simply following Jesus. Uh, I've heard somebody said, if Jesus calls you to it, he'll get you through it. Uh, Paul's confidence was in Christ. He was able to press on because it coincided with his faith and his faithfulness to follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Paul understood the straining and striving that can happen in this life, but at the end of the day, that straining and striving would ultimately yield strength, further confidence, and faith in Christ. Has these last couple of years given you greater confidence in Christ? Are you listening today thinking, wow, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. If that's not the case, I say we take Paul's advice by pressing in so that we can press on. We are able to press on because of where our strength comes from. I want to finish today with Psalm 121. I'm going to read the whole uh, thing. Turn with me to Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? Verse 2, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither, will neither slumber nor sleep. Verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep you, he will keep your life. Verse 8, the Lord will keep you. You're going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forever more. We face a new year, 2022. Psalm 120. One tells us that our help comes from God. God will keep us. He will give us the strength that we need to face the day and to press on. I pray this morning that you would draw on that, that you would, uh, like Paul, uh, receive, uh, obtain, uh, <laughs> take with initiative all that God has for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, help us to press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know fully the difficulties we face in this life. May we look to you for strength, comfort, confidence, and a conviction to carry out what you've called each of us to do. We pray in Jesus' powerful and mighty name. Amen. Uh, well, church, thank you for joining 
in today uh, until next week may you be filled with the confidence may you be filled with the strength that god offers each one of us in jesus name and next week starting that new series called blessed i hope that you will tune in until then blessings in christ <laughs>